good morning and welcome in the present set of uh, four lectures probably a couple of hours you will see a set of lectures which are quite vague the reason is that this is a setting a stage for a next course on partial differential equations what we have seen is pde one course we have covered some topics we extended many of the results uh, we could not finish there and we have studied further on that one now in the process of studying this pde one and pdu two you would observe that you don't have the or rather we don't have the comfort level of finding solutions in the usual differentiable spaces so on one hand you have a differentiable uh, equations which are smooth you expect but what we have observed is that quite often you don't get uh, solutions uh, in the smooth class the reason for that can be many but probably the reason is that the physical quantities which you are formulating which you have seen also minimization problems etc may not have the smoothness the pde problem the pds uh, the actual physical problems uh, will not have smoothness at all differentiability property at all but then you are form modeling such physical problems into your partial differential equations and if you are trying to solve that partial differential equations in a smooth class of functions uh, naturally you don't get solutions so this was uh, an understanding right from the end of 19th century and early part of the 20th century and even in our set of lectures you have seen when you, whether you are studying conservation laws and uh, hamilton jacobi equations we have some sense introduced uh, some sort of a uh, weak solution without getting it into the nitty gritties of the mathematical techniques even in this set of lectures we cannot do that one and that's a basically next course on partial differential equations what's called an advanced pde course so but we want to uh, give a glimpse of this theory and many theories developed lower in the last 100 120 20 to 50 years uh, about understanding your function uh, pde in the context of functional analysis and other mathematics uh, developed okay so uh, what we are going to so, so our uh, lectures will be deliberately vague any many things you may not be very very clear about why we are doing that because we are, we don't have time or that's not expected of this course but at the same time we want to glimpse of some theory so one of the theories developed uh, in the 1940s uh, what's the uh, lauren shores maybe exactly in 1944 introduced the uh, no weak notion of a derivative if a function is not differentiable in a classical sense uh, you can actually differentiate in a weaker sense uh, using the theory of distributions so maybe in the last two lectures i will try to introduce the concept of weak derivative without again getting into the more function analysis uh, but in the first two lectures uh, let me give you in a slightly vague notions and this will be little more clear when i introduce the other things so that's why the title is given what's happening is a hilbert space method so what are we doing in trying to so the, uh, the motivation is very clear now so you want to look for spaces look for spaces bigger than classical space classical smooth bigger than classical need not be hilbert space all the time but i am explaining thing and in fact I, what i am going to explain everything in the setup of uh, uh, elliptic equation but this is not restricted to only elliptic equation so this weak theory is uh, can develop for other hyperbolic parabolic equations in fact the modern way of understanding is in that uh, in that uh, format so it should be bigger than classical smooth spaces Good. say for example for look for
sorry okay so look for hilbert spaces okay look for hilbert spaces for solutions that's a, so what is the algorithm we are looking at it so you are basically looking for an algorithm or a set of rules okay so look for uh, hilbert space uh, uh, or for solutions uh, and then you have to introduce so in, you have to introduce appropriate hilbert space introduce appropriate hilbert spaces later when you study advanced pde you will see what are called sobolo spaces i may indicate something later after a couple of hours so what do i call it so there may be other spaces okay this is one a set of spaces where you are putting. so you are looking for a solution in a hilbert space the next step so i am giving a very general algorithm the next step uh, set a uh, thing is to give a suitable give a suitable formulation of the pde suitable formulation so let me see hilbert space h as i said need not be hilbert space other spaces so let me stick to here give a suitable formulation of the problem on h formulation of the pde in h yeah, that's what is it's all vague such a formulation is called a weak formulation such a formulation is called a weak formulation it should have a see it's not that when you have anything you choose and any formulation you give and then you immediately say that this is my weak formulation that's not enough you have to have a, some relation to your pde eventually so that's why the, uh, we'll see that such a formulation is called a weak formulation okay. all these are all difficult we don't know how to do it but one of the things you have to see that we as i said you can give some formulation and say that this is equal so you have to check some equivalence so naturally what is it when you say that it is a weak solution and the corresponding formulation if you have a solution it's called if if there exists a solution is called a, if there is a, exists a solution to that formulation is called a solution then it's called a weak solution then it is called a weak solution so by the name weak solution suggests it should be weaker than your strong solution classical solution so the first thing you have to check uh, check every classical solution is a uh, every classical i will not make all the time when i say simply a solution it's a classical solution so i will not use this word so every classical solution okay is a weak solution this is what you should be checking for sure and then classical solution somewhat kind even if you get a weak solution it should be connected to your this is one way checking every classical solution is a weak solution but even if you get a weak solution you have some interpretation okay conversely if u is a, i have not even prescribed anything if u is a weak solution and somehow it happens that u is happen to be u happen to be smooth so the weak solution may not give u is smooth but somehow after fighting a weak solution from the weak solution and it happen to be a smooth happen to be smooth so you have a weak solution it is smooth enough to verify your classical thing then it should be a classical solution 
sufficiently smooth according to PDE. If it's a first order PDE, should be once differentiable like that. Then it should be a, it should be a. This is very important to see the equivalent should be a, a classical solution. This you should so whenever you form a weak theory, so it's a, the strong theory should be uh, a strong theory gives you weak theory and then weak theory has more physical classical solution. So these are the kind of steps you to do it. So and of course then prove. course prove existence uniqueness this may prove existence uniqueness using weak formulation so in this direction there are don't just one the functional analysis the advanced functional analysis will help advanced functional analysis may help more than that more than that it may be a actual physical solution i told you the few classic uh, many of the physical solutions may not be smooth enough but in a weak solution setup it will be it may be a uh, it may be more physical it may be a physical solution physical solution physical solution I think you I need more pages so I will add more pages here for you okay so we have a set of problem so it may be a physical solution okay and then it's not how do you prove then then if possible that's the thing if possible Prove uh, weak solution has smoothness. That's uh, so by the earlier argument, a very smooth, a weak solution, and such results are a smoothness that will imply it is a classical solution. So this is also a method to prove classical solution. First prove weak solution may be easy but your functional analysis available but then uh, prove the and then smoothness and then show that it is it, then it will become a classical solution. And proving such kind of smoothness is known as regularity estimates, regularity theorems. So after getting in some Hilbert space, show that it is uh, elder continuous. It is twice differentiable and all that. Okay, regularity uh, results. And this is quite often use a notation. Use what are known uh, known as embedding theorems. You embed certain spaces in general in other spaces we will not do this one in this class but what i am saying is that what are is again so this is the basic algorithm which you follow in a gen it is a very very general setup i'm going to do it okay so now let me start with some example to motivate you further so i want you to how these weak solutions are quite often physical in the earlier lectures of calculus of variations uh, uh, we have given uh, minimization problems and minimization problems uh, you may not have second derivative and then you uh, seen probably you will see the uh, 
its uh, uh, equations uh, uh, hamilton jacobi equations which are all pde if u is smooth and then you have seen that you may not be smooth and you prove that lipschitz continuous solutions and unique in us in that one so you have seen so already uh, such results so we are going to give an another result i think so you are applying a uh, force f force f on an elastic domain an elastic body omega omega so i am taking omega is a, for simplicity you can take r3 and r4 and for simplicity i am taking so uh, it's not necessary it can be in r and then what is uh, the energy functional so you can introduce what is called an energy functional energy functional f of v is equal to half of this a kind of strain energy dv by dx square plus dv by dy square okay. minus integral of f of v in some domain i'm not even putting conditions now okay this is also you can write it as in general even in higher domain this is nothing but uh, grade v dot grade v which you know minus integral of f of v so this is the your and these are typical energy function in an elastic body okay so at an equilibrium state the energy at an equilibrium state at an equilibrium state we need to minimize energy we need to minimize energy in other words find you we don't know where to find you find you in some space these are all the problem you have to do it some space i will uh, typically take some x later to show you some analysis so find u in x such that f of u this we have already seen and that's what is uh, in the other minimization problems of uh, Uh, trajectory minimizations you have seen it but now in this case this will be an infinite dimensional space in general infinite dimensional so we are doing something uh, more than finite dimension which you have seen it in the euler lagrange equations and the calculus of variations so you want to minimize f of v for v in x so this is what you are looking for told you can everything you can specify now what do you do let's recall the one dimensional situation which i have explained recall from n equal to 1 from the standard minimum standard the standard one dimensional dimensional this i already explained later but i am repeating case suppose you want to find x not in an interval ab say ab and you want to find f of x not is equal to minimum of f of x x is in ab so what do you do you can prove existence not the uniqueness of course there will be minimum Prove, prove, can prove existence if f is continuous. That's fine. But how do you find the solution? Existence if f is continuous. Okay. So this is a sufficient condition. You see, sufficient condition. But then this is only a there. You want to find the minimum thing. Then you have a, also a necessary condition. You see. necessary sorry condition if 
f prime x uh, f prime x f uh, is c1 and x not is x is and x not x is you are not proving x not x is if uh, so if f is a1 and if x not x is in interval internally you have all these condition then that implies uh, you have f prime of x not equal to zero so you see so the f prime of x not equal to zero that's all critical points of f so uh, so if x not is a minimum it's a critical point and as you know that critical points need not be minimum so it's only a necessary condition in general whatever it is and this is what we want to go it so uh, so you have to do this analysis in infinite do the analysis in infinite dimensional space in finite dimensional space dimensional space in other words first you prove under conditions that f has a minimum that's the first step so you need to have conditions on f to prove the minimum so the jobs are two so uh, need conditions which i am not going to do all this that's a convex analysis and other analysis you can do that need conditions to prove existence uniqueness of you existence and that's not my aim here with uniqueness and this is uh, ex uh, uh, uniqueness so this is something like a sufficient condition you are looking at there are conditions you know that so but what my interest here so suppose necessary condition in this setup necessary condition suppose u is a minimum we don't know yet okay suppose u in x is a minimum minimum uh, derive necessary condition condition so going with the one dimension case you need to understand the derivative so that means need to understand understand f prime now okay so this other there is a notion called the fresher derivative on no linear process fresher derivative on normed linear spaces linear spaces so you need to understand so i am doing without introducing uh, i am uh, trying to derive say i say z is going to be i am not going to introduce all these concepts uh, but i am doing it in a slightly vague way but it is more understandable without introducing all these notions so we will start so we take uh, as a special case take for example uh, you need to define f of v for example to define this integral to define this integral you need uh, v to be a grade v to be an uh, l2 function also you need v to be differentiable so you keep that minimum requirement and then to avoid any boundary conditions on the uh, thing so i will take uh, i start with a space uh, x uh, equal to i start with a space x equal to c1 0 of omega bar to avoid any difficulty okay so uh, it to be that integral should be meaningful so this is set of all v that's a minimum thing from the definition i my definition should be valid for me okay and then uh, f should be some l2 function or continuous function you can take it and uh, with c1 zero means and v equal to zero on d omega 
okay so you may ask why i taken because this is the minimum so that my integral and maybe take uh, f is an l2 function if necessary that's enough because v is a continuous function and uh, and so hence it will be integrable so f is in l2 so that or you can take f equal to be a continuous function if you want it no problem so one of these functions will be defined. so i want to understand my variations so if i take my v that way so suppose u is a solution so i leave it as an exercise for you before the come suppose u is a solution minimum u is a minimum then f of u u is a minimum in c10 of omega bar and that's my x here then f of u will be less than or equal to f of v for all v in c10 of omega bar that's true so I will compute in some way. So you take v, take v arbitrarily, v in x, this is one of zero, and t be any number, t is in r. That implies my u, u is the minimum, my u plus t v is also in c1. So, so my job, what I want to do. Uh, Okay, this is your exercise for you. Compute this limit. Compute limit of t tends to zero or f of c u plus t v that is minus f of u by t. You compute this by t is nothing but integral of grade u dot grade v okay okay minus omega so you see integral of f of v over omega so my definition i will define so i can define anything right so i i will define f prime of u given u u is fixed u is the minimum solution f prime of u is defined to be a mapping from here to here prove this this you can prove using the main thing f of u okay you can exactly get this compute this okay limit t tends to zero so f prime of u this is my derivative i'm defining a derivative in this fashion evaluated at every v is equal to grade u dot grade v minus integral of the fourth so last what i will now immediately know because u is the minimum so uh, when t is positive this is you can actually this is your derivative so you want your derivative to be zero at a minimum point so we want so if u is a minimum 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 then f prime of u equal to zero in x equally in f prime of u v equal to zero for all that's how when a function f is zero fx equal to zero where functional is zero it will action on that uh, will be zero in x that is you get an another formulation integral grade u grade v equal to f of v for all v in x so you have a different formulation now and u is in x so you have a new formulation if u is a solution then you have a, this is equivalent to your what you have seen is f prime of x is equal to zero and then you look for a solution here So we will discuss more. Uh, so you, this is a problem to be solved now. X is equal to C10 of omega. So next class, we will uh, tell you its connection to your Poisson equation. Okay. When this represented by a Poisson equation. 
and what is additional thing you need to get poison equation from here so and this will turn out to be you one way of weak formulation of your laplace equation but the solubility of this is what eventually will lead to have a new uh, mathematics to be developed which we will do little bit but not too much okay thank you